Now, as Syria struggles to help survivors of the deadly earthquake, some have sought shelter across the border in neighbouring Turkey. But that, it seems, is causing unrest. There have been signs of hostility towards Syrian refugees, which other residents are now trying to confront. Shadi Qasim has turned this car rental shop in the city of Messin into a makeshift shelter. He's hosting homeless Syrians who were displaced by the earthquake. Dozens of families live in the shop basement. Some were kicked out of emergency shelters for earthquake victims just because they are Syrian. We are spotting scores of Syrians outside the emergency shelters. They can't find places. The shelters are fully occupied. Some places are inaccessible for Syrians because of all the pressure. This is what's happening to us. We opened this makeshift centre to help people and to keep them safe. The deadly earthquake that hit Mersin impacted everyone, no matter their background. However, a campaign has emerged against Syrian refugees in Turkey. Anti-Syrian slogans such as, I do not want refugees in my country, they must be deported, and you are not welcome, have gone viral online. Anti-refugee messages like this are nothing new in countries that host significant refugee populations. I've seen this happen in times of catastrophe, political and economic crises, and elections. Often, nationalist political groups take advantage of the situation to fuel their anti-immigration campaigns. They create rage against the most vulnerable refugees, accusing them of draining local resources. Volkan Akdeniz and his friends reject the anti-refugee rhetoric. They organized a demonstration against what they considered racist slogans. And they are now coordinating efforts to shelter and help Syrian refugees. I feel terrible about all these racist comments on the internet. And I'm doing everything, along with other people who think like me, to put an end to this hate speech in our society. Because I believe that humanity shall prevail and love shall take over. Shadi receives another call for help. His phone hasn't stopped ringing since the disaster struck. A new family just arrived looking for accommodation. Many have nothing left after the devastating quake. It's likely many more will come calling. Caroline Holt is the Global Director for Operations at the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, and she joins us now from Geneva, Switzerland. Welcome to DW. Um, we are going to talk about the wider humanitarian situation in Syria in just a moment, but I'd like to start by discussing the ethnic tensions that we've just seen addressed in that report. How worrying are these reports of, of homeless people being kicked out of camps in Turkey because they're Syrian? Well, thank you for uh, asking me to join you this morning. Um, yes, of course, it, it's worrying when, when stories like this come across, but I also think it's critical that we maintain a level of balance in this as well. As your report absolutely suggested, there are signs uh, and there are stories at the end that are extremely hopeful. Let's also remember that Turkey is not uh, is a country that's not new to hosting Syrian refugees. And actually for the last 10 years, there have been Syrian refugees. In fact, uh, Turkey is the largest host of uh, Syrian refugees in the world. So that anti-Syrian uh, or anti-refugee sentiment, um, it's potentially a, a pocket of the population, but I don't think in my experiences with, uh, with in Turkey is, uh, is necessarily reflective of the situation as a whole. And we know that our partners on the ground, the Turkish Red Crescent, have actually been uh, engaging with and we've had programs for many years that have specifically been targeting support for Syrian refugees. Uh, and Syrians have been very much made to feel at home inside Turkey as well in the instances that I've seen. So I think some balance in this is, is necessary. And yet, of course, uh, it's also not unusual, as your report suggested, that uh, at very stressful times like this, we do see these unfortunate situations arise. Um 
More broadly, there are growing concerns about getting aid into Syria quickly. Can you tell us, are you able to get supplies and help to those uh, in need there? We are, yes. We're working with our partners on the ground, the Syrian Arab Red Crescent. And uh, yes, they are very active. They've been active, of course, uh, before uh, this event happened. And they're working with communities already, let's remember, suffering from extreme levels of vulnerability due to the, uh, the context of Syria itself. But yes, we are able to, uh, to get aid in to a certain extent. Is it enough? I would say no. I would say that the needs are huge. I would say that the complexities, of course, of Syria are also complicating efforts to a certain extent. And we really welcome all efforts that are currently being made to uh, increase access to those that have been affected by this uh, event. I believe you have more than 5,000 staff and volunteers deployed across Turkey. Can you tell us what are they telling you, you know, about the, the actual situation on the ground? What are the most pressing challenges that they're, the people are dealing with there right now? Yes, um, we are. Obviously, we've been on the on the ground through the uh, through the Turkish uh, Red Crescent since day one, uh, and the the stories, of course, are, are coming back. Are, as again, as your report suggested, the needs are unfolding, and I think the true extent of this disaster has not yet been seen. We know that the uh, that the infrastructure damage is huge, and we know that there are still. Uh, people, uh, bodies, let's say, at this stage, trapped underneath the rubble. It is unfortunate that the search and rescue phase probably has come to an end mostly now. So really, our teams on the ground are focusing still on life-saving uh, uh, needs and, and really supporting people with, with basic needs, with household items, with shelter, with food. Um, the health implications of this particular disaster also shouldn't be uh, underestimated, not only the physical injuries, but also the mental uh, and psychosocial trauma that people have experienced as a result of this. So really, that's where our team's uh, efforts are focusing right now. Caroline Holt from the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, thanks so much for your time.